Did you enjoy your, your first big UFC press conference yesterday? I sure did. <laughs> it was pretty short and sweet, so I liked it even more. <laughs> Is it a crazy thing being up there? I mean, you got all those eyeballs on you. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm somewhat aware of it. I don't know the reality until I look back at it and then see some pictures and <laughs> hindsight. It all, it's like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Is there a pressure when you've got like Izzy and Derek Brunson saying like yelling at each other? Do you think like, okay, I got to steal the show at all? And no, crazy? no, no. That's that's what they like to do. That's their fun. If I tried it, I would just be so like lost. <laughs> it wouldn't be organic at all. <laughs> It seems like that is not your your way to promote a fight, like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, unless I study lines and you know, then I can make it a show. <laughs> but that's not part of my job. It's not part of your training. It's yeah. physical training, not not studying Yet, books. I am in L. A. Hollywood. Just saying. Yeah, you know, training and next press conference, you and Bonzi, you can have some, some lines. <laughs> yeah. Right. What was it like uh, facing off with her for the first time? Um, it was just like any other face off. You know, I don't think we're really gonna feel the tension until it's like the weigh-in face-off and we know it's real. We still have about a month. So it was just, yeah, like any other thing. How is training going and, and how are you feeling? You had some health issues, some some injuries. Can you talk about those and how, how you're doing now? Yeah, I'm, I'm great with my um, my infection. <laughs> uh, got the tonsils out and now I just seem to not be getting sick like at all. I was getting sick constantly like every other week or so. Um, and as far as my foot goes, it's uh, it's arthritic now, so it's, I'm just gonna have to get used to the pain. Um, but you, you know, everybody doesn't go into. There's like not one fighter that goes into the fight, into the fight, into the octagon with like a hundred percent health. <laughs> it's just not heard of. So this is it's very common. How long were you dealing with uh, like illnesses before you knew that it was tonsillitis? Um, for about four and. Like three, three and a half months. Wow. Yeah, it was literally like I would just get five hours of sleep one night and I'd be trying to get back in camp and I'd wake up with a strep throat or with a dry throat and I'd go in. They're like, it's not strep throat, but we're going to treat it as such and give you like a penicillin shot. And so it was just off and on between that and ear infections. And I was just like, I have no idea what's going on. Like I'm eating healthy. I'm eating like I'm in camp, like I'm trying to get back into shape. And my immune system was just shot. Everything else was good. I did like all these tests and stuff. I was a little anemic. Um, but then as soon as I got checked out in Vegas with the nose throat ear specialist, he was just like, let's get those suckers out in a week. And I was like, right on. When when was um, this going on? Like, well, like earlier this year, like in the spring and then mm -hmm. like summer? Yeah, like right after I got out of the boot. Because I think I just tried to shoot myself straight into a camp and my body was like, what are you doing? Like you spent two months kind of just like paddling with your hands um and i should have just listened to dr shar who i see now over at ortho elite therapy in albuquerque because she was like come on in her and dr Bo were like come in asap and i was like no i have to listen to the ortho doctor she told me to stay in my boot so we can start to like trial and error the treatments for this and stuff so i should have just hopped over there because now i can wear heels you know now i can do a lot of things that the doctor there had told me i wasn't going to be able to do and then after that, I shot right into camp, and I kept getting sick and sick and sick, and now I'm better. <laughs> now so I'm in camp. <laughs> so you have all this stuff going on, and then, of course, there's, there's pressure from, I'm sure, the UFC because you're a champion, and they want you to get back in there and, and fight. And I'm sure there's probably pressure from her side. She was doing some talking as well. So what are, what are your thoughts during the time? Like, you know, you're, you're, feel, you're feeling probably terrible, and oh, all yeah. these people are kind of coming at you from different sides. Absolutely. I was... Um, so during that process, I was just like, whatever, I'm going to show them. Like, I'm in training, like, daily, so whatever. But it wasn't until, like, after the surgery that, like, when I was in recovery and I was, like, propped up in my bed for, like, two weeks straight, just not being able to really even move. So I didn't even look at my phone too often. I was just laying there in pain. If anybody has ever had a tonsillectomy, you you know. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was just, like, I couldn't talk. I couldn't drink water couldn't do anything for a while and everyone just getting pretty noisy on the internet about like where's nico blah 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 and i'm like over here in my deathbed <laughs> and so you know it's kind of just an outlash whenever ariel you know got, i got wind of that my boyfriend came in he was like what what ariel on his thing and i was like well i couldn't like scream or anything so i typed it all out um 
So, you know, there was a little bit of like, why would you just kick somebody while they're down already? You know, I'm not over here having a good time being sick. It's not my priority to just be like, all right, belt, I'll get to you later. Like you're, you're back there. I'm just going to hang out in my house and do nothing. Like people just thought I was just chilling. <laughs> No, I'm trying to recover. Were you um in a hospital though when you wrote that? that no. Instagram? Okay. No, that was like, I had to stay a couple of days in Vegas right after the surgery. And then we came back probably like after four days. And like right when I came back home is when I got all that craziness. <laughs> Any regrets about that, about that whole, about that whole situation? No. Um, I think for people who can read in between the lines, grasp what they were trying to get at. And I stood up for myself. Um, I, you know, it wasn't, it's still not understanding to me why people would not. Like, you know, like they're too afraid to speak out against somebody who's trash talking them just in fear of losing supporters or fans or anybody like that. Um, to me, this is kind of just still what I've always been doing. There's nothing different about my mindset, my mind um, set in progression with this MMA career now that I'm in the UFC you know I'm still going to stand up for myself when I think it's appropriate I'd love to hear about some of the positive aspects that you've got developed you know starting with the Navajo Nation yeah um, what's been your favorite part of how it's changing life yeah so that um, a lot of people are like where have you been how come you're not going on like these UFC media tours and such Uh, I've been busy on the res I've been busy with the Navajo Nation Um, they uh, they made December 3rd Nico Montano Day, that was pretty crazy. Um, I also got recognized in the winter um, council session as just like a motivator for the Navajo Nation and for the kids, the youth especially. Um, But I made some trips back home and was able to tell everybody thank you. Um, I think it's huge for the kids there to know that they can become whoever they want to become as long as they stay dedicated, you know, and, and happy about their path. That they choose. In the photos, the kids seem very excited to, you know, you were there with the belt. What's their reaction when you walk in? And- right? Some of them, some of them still live in Hogan. Some of them don't see shiny things, right? In a Hogan, there's a, you live in a dirt floor. So just seeing like something bright and shiny like that, I'm sure made them smile. And then you tell them what it's about. And fighting is so common in the sense of like playfulness. Like there's not a lot of like basketball, you know, or courts or football courts or whatever. So we just wrestle each other a lot of the time growing up. Um, So they understand it. You know, those kids get it. Do you feel like a role model a little bit because they're living in some tough circumstances and you can come in and say, hey, I'm I'm from where you guys came from and I'm a world champion? Absolutely. You know, there's not a lot of people um, that I feel like they can trust and listen to because a lot of people just want them kind of to become more westernized, not even modernized, just more westernized in culture aspects. But I feel like that's what makes me stronger. I think that's my strength is my culture and my tradition. So I want them to realize that they don't need to feel like they have to assimilate to anything or any assumptions of how they should be acting in any sort of mannerism and, you know, out, out of the res. Just be true and be honest. I don't think that's like a hard thing to do for anybody. Is it a message that you'd like to spread to other, and we call I'm Canadian, so it's okay. First Nations community. Right. But um, to other sort of First Nations, or with whatever the American kid? Natives, Native, indigenous yeah, peoples. Indigenous peoples, um, even to other communities? Yeah. Um, you know, it's give it, give it your 110% to any passionate thing that you can see yourself having a career with. Um, I would never have known that I would have gotten this far if I wanted to give up the amount of times I wanted to give up after my losses, um, after just hard training sessions, you know, after not being able to pay rent. I was there and, you know, now I'm here because I, I stayed honest about my efforts to get to where I'm at today. There are some people uh, who have almost already ridden you off in this fight because they probably know her. <laughs> they're more familiar with her right. than they are with you in, in many ways. What is your What is your response to that? What is your message to those people? Um, I suppose my reaction was that laugh. <laughs> it's uh, nothing new. It's like nothing new. A lot of my fights, even uh, my my amateur belt, my king of the cage pro belt, I was the underdog for those, like all of my fights. I'm just some girl from Legetri guy. So, you know, what I, I don't want to say that there's what, I don't want to say that 
that's expected because I don't want the kids from Legacha Guy being like, well, then if that's how they think about me, then why should I give this much effort? But that's why. Like, don't let anybody label you, you know? You know what you're capable of. You know your true potential. You don't know your true potential until you try and try again and fail, right? You just have to figure out a different way. That's all That's all learning, and that's all growing stronger. I'm going to finish her in the first round. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I've learned you can pretty much say anything because there's going to be a, the same question asked tomorrow. <laughs> I'm looking forward to see how that plays out. <laughs> <laughs> right, me too. Me too. <laughs> but if you're right, you can get mystic. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I could, yeah, one of these things I'll, I'll get right. One of these things. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Thank you.